Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. So great to have you here with us on this Monday. It's a mailbag Monday. I answer your questions all throughout today's edition of Lockdown Blue Devils. My name is JJ Jackson, and I'm the host of this podcast. You can follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Blue Devils for free wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it comes out each day. Be sure to also subscribe to our Locked On Blue Devils YouTube page to watch the show daily. If you're watching with us right now on YouTube, thanks for being here. Be sure to share our YouTube channel with your friends. Like and subscribe. Turn those post notifications on. All that jazz. It means a whole lot. Again, thank you for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen and your first watch each and every day. On today's show, as I said, it's another installment of Mailbag Monday. I am always compiling questions to answer from you, the listener, or you, the viewer, here on Lockdown Blue Devils. All questions can be sent to our Twitter account, again, at LO underscore Blue Devils, in a DM, in a tweet, however you want to get it my way, I'll read it on the show. Or you could send an email, Devils at gmail.com. Again, LockedOnBlueDevils at gmail.com if you would like your question to be answered within the show. Got several good ones. Took some notes here, so let's get right to it here on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. Our first question today came in an email from Brad. Brad writes in and says, how do you weigh expectations with such a young, talented team and it being John Shire's first year? It's a great question. It's something that I've often thought about. It's something that when we have national guests that cover college basketball and cover Duke Coops directly, I'm curious to have conversations and discourse with them about this subject because Duke basketball is such a young team going into this upcoming season. We mentioned the number one recruiting class for Coach Shire, five players at the end of the week. We'll find out where they're playing in the NBA. So big time roster turnover for this Duke team, and it's also the first season for John Shire taking over as head coach. In terms of weighing expectations, the thing that I keep going back to in my mind is this. Duke basketball is elite. Plain and simple, Duke basketball is elite, and we have seen time and time again the Duke men's basketball team, the Duke Blue Devils, every single season can and will compete for a national championship, as well as competing in the ACC. When you look at this upcoming season, obviously North Carolina, the team that ousted Duke in the Final Four and lost in the national championship game, the Tar Heels are returning a lot of people. Over the weekend, they got the commitment of Pete Nance, who's a transfer from Northwestern. He's the younger brother of Larry Nance Jr. in the NBA. His dad, Larry Nance, played in the league as well. So Pete Nance from Northwestern, a really good transfer to replace Brady Manick in the starting lineup. I still believe Duke can compete with the Tar Heels in the ACC this season, given the talent on the floor. And I do believe this season we're going to get to see how brilliant of a coach John Shire is. So many people are constantly raving about his X's and O's ability, and we're going to get to see that here right from the get-go in this first season. And so in terms of weighing expectations, look, once you get to the NCAA tournament, we have seen it time and time again. The most talented Duke teams do not go all the way and win it. And some of the Duke teams that you may have reservations about, the 2010, the 2010 team that John Shire starred on as well, not many people from the outside thought that Duke would be able to win six consecutive games in March in that tournament format and get the job done, and that's exactly what they did. So I think that there's still going to be big-time championship expectations. We saw the freshmen came into campus this past weekend Really excited. A couple of players will be getting there over the next few weeks. Tyreeks Proctor being one of them coming over 
from Australia. And I've got another question coming up here a little bit later about jersey numbers. And Jaden Shute saw what number he was in the Duke men's basketball post and immediately commented the incoming freshman, the only number we care about is six. And that's the sixth national championship that Duke men's basketball is hunting for. So, Brad, I hope that's kind of an idea of what you were looking for. And, again, that's a question that I'd love to ask many other college basketball experts. How do you weigh those expectations? It's going to take a little bit of a learning process and a learning curve, I'm sure, for Shiner on the fly. He's not Coach K. Coach K is the greatest of all time to do it. But we're still going to be contending for national and ACC championships with Duke basketball. I really do believe that. Next question comes from Mike. On Twitter, Jacob Grandison, the transfer from Illinois. Just how good of a shooter is he? <laughs> That's a pretty simple question there from Mike. Again, Jacob Grandison, the transfer from Illinois. Just how good of a shooter is he? Well, Grandison played two seasons at Holy Cross, redshirted a season in his transfer year, and then played two seasons at Illinois. He's a native of Oakland, California. He's going to be 24 years old. He is 24, and he's going to be playing his final year of college basketball. He is a terrific three-point shooter. At six foot six, he shot 41% from three-point range this past season, averaged 9.6 points per game. And you say 41%, is he taking just two shots a game? No, he averaged 4.5 attempts from the three-point line a season ago in games. I mean, this is a guy that had a good volume, a good number of shots in the Big Ten against good competition there for the Illinois fight in the line eye and shot 41% from deep in his career. That number does drop off at 31%. His seasons at Holy Cross, he was not as efficient of a shooter. But like any good basketball player, the more practice you put in, the more experience you have, the better you become. And we've seen that throughout Grandison's career. Saw these numbers that were really important to highlight out there online. From the right corner a season ago, Jacob Grandison shot 63.2% on three-pointers from the right corner, and from the left corner, 47.8%. He is a lethal corner three-point shooter on top of just being a great three-point shooter. And so if Duke can get him into those spots, I know they will. I know they'll scheme up some shots to get Grandison some open looks. He's going to make you pay. He's going to knock him down. He really is a terrific three-point shooter. Valerie sent us a question on Twitter as well. Valerie says, will you miss Trevor Keels this year? Yeah, absolutely. I'm one of those guys that I miss every Duke men's basketball player after they go on and go to the NBA, particularly those one and done guys. I'm also the guy that loves to kind of have those thoughts about, okay, we're going into this season. What year would this be for certain guys? You take a look at some of the guys recently drafted into the league, and we are just now here in 2022 getting towards the end of that four-year eligibility window for the likes of Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and Cam Reddish. I'm always thinking about that because all these Duke one-and-done guys meant so much, and obviously I'm going to miss them year after year and love cheering for them at the next level in the NBA. Teals will find out at the end of the week what his professional team looks like. 6'5", a bulky score, as we all know. Fun guy to watch. Really did look like a linebacker out there on the basketball floor. He absolutely loved being a Duke Blue Devil. You could tell uh, his story of being high school teammates with Jay Roach and now getting to play with Jeremy for a season was uh, a lifetime memory, I'm sure, that they're going to think about for quite some time. Talk about a debut against Kentucky to come on the scene like that, scoring 25 points, something we'll always remember for Trevor Keels. The shot was inconsistent at times, but I'm absolutely going to miss Trevor Keels this upcoming season playing for the Duke men's basketball team. I've got more questions coming up here in just a moment on Locked On Blue Devils. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Moving forward here on today's edition of Lockdown Blue Devils. Again, my name is JJ Jackson. This is Mailbag Monday. Answering all your questions, send them to us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. 
or send an email, LockedOnBlueDevils at gmail.com. Got an email from Brooks. Brooks sent a question. What Duke football player are you most excited about watching in the 2022 season? Fun question. Uh, Shaka Hayward on the defense, Jalen Calhoun on the offensive side of the ball. Those are my answers. Shaka Hayward, the linebacker, one of the leaders on this team, a redshirt senior. He wears number 42, led the team with tackles with 97 a season ago, a traditional linebacker that's all over the place, making tons of plays. Cannot wait to watch Shaka Hayward play this upcoming season. And then on the offensive side of the ball, Jalen Calhoun, a senior at number five. I love wide receivers that have incredible ball skills, can make things happen after catching the football, and that's exactly what Calhoun can do at five foot 11, 190, a really shifty wide receiver in his career, 144 of 141 catches, nearly 1,500 receiving yards. That's about 10 and a half yards per catch, nine touchdowns, and one rushing touchdown in his career. I think you're going to see Jalen Calhoun catch a lot of passes near the line of scrimmage this season and then letting his feet do the work and pick up first downs and move the chains for this Duke Blue Devil offense. And then, of course, I'll throw in the quarterbacks. Number eight, Jordan Moore. Number 13, Riley Leonard. Big quarterback battle that we'll see throughout fall camp. Both guys bring a little bit different skill sets to the football team, but I'm excited to watch them this upcoming season. Thanks for the question, Brooks. Uh, here's a good one. Here's a good one from an email. Uh, Devil in a Blue Dress writes in, since you've started the Locked On Blue Devils podcast, who would be in your starting five for guests that you've had? Very creative question. I really like that. Uh, I started Locked On Blue Devils, joined the Locked On Network, and we launched this Duke-specific podcast. We did not have one in the network until I joined it, and we started this back in March of 2021. So here we are, 15 months or so into this journey together, and now we're in the YouTube space and so grateful for everybody supporting this, watching, subscribing, leaving those five-star rating and written reviews on the podcast platform. You know i got to throw that out there. That's so important to us. And I've had a lot of great guests to go along the way. But if I had to make a starting five, I'll also say that within those guests, I've had my mom and my dad both appear on this podcast, which was a whole lot of fun to talk about Duke basketball memories. Still haven't got my brother to be on the program. That's something we're trying to do. Eli Jackson, this is my message to you. we got to get you on the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. But uh, So I'll take mom and dad out of it. Not fair if they're included in this mix. i got to start with Josh Cox from the Section 17 podcast. He's been on the show more than anybody else, a frequent guest at least once a week throughout the football season. We continue that all the way out through the basketball season as well. Luff is insight. He's truly become a friend. I'm always supporting with the Section 17 podcast, guys are doing. So Josh Cox will be one of the guys in my starting five. Let me put Brendan Marks of The Athletic in there as well. So sharp, so, so does such a good job of covering Duke men's basketball, and he does cover North Carolina. I enjoy his insight when he's on the program. Same goes for Steve Wiseman with the Raleigh News and Observer. Really appreciate every time Steve comes on the show. He's been covering Duke Athletics since 2010 at a really high level, has great profiles, uh, for both basketball and football. Really remember reading a profile about Mateo Durant a season ago that Wiseman wrote that was just so good. Talked about his life and coming from a really small town and now being a star, a running back in the ACC, and we see what Durant's doing in his NFL career now. Uh, Ryan Lohman, he runs the Duke Nation Twitter account. He's been a terrific guest. Every time I've had him on the program, a lot of people – Love the content that we're able to put out there together. So he would be there. And then I'm going to put Chris Edwards in the mix as well. He's with the Blue Devil Network. He is the radio play-by-play -play voice for Duke women's basketball and Duke baseball. He's also a good friend. I do a lot of play-by-play -play, uh, in this professional gig as well. And so uh, Chris has become a good buddy, and I definitely put him in my starting five. So, again, that question's coming from Devil in a Blue Dress. And uh, Josh Cox, Brendan Marks, Ryan Lohman, Steve Wiseman, Chris Edwards. That kind of makes up my starting five there. All right, Carly sent us a, a DM on Twitter. Carly said, I care a lot about jersey numbers for the Duke men's basketball team. What number will everyone wear for the 2022-2023 season? I'm obsessed with jersey numbers too. I'm really glad someone asked this. So uh, let me run through this really quickly because, again, I mentioned it a little bit earlier with Jaden Shoots. Uh, Instagram comment about the no only number we care about is six. Let me run through this. Uh, Derek Whitehead wears number zero. That was previously worn by Wendell Moore Jr. Uh, Derek Lively, the second, is going to wear number one. 
Uh, that was worn last year by Trevor Keels. Number two will be Jalen Blakes as he comes back for his second season. Jeremy Roach will wear number three once again. Tyrese Proctor, the incoming freshman, wears number five. That jersey was worn by Paulo Banquero a season ago. Kale Catchings, the Harvard transfer coming in, he will wear number 12. That was worn by Theo John last season. Uh, Jacob Grandison will wear number 13. Grandison comes over from Illinois and Holy Cross. 13 was worn by Joey Baker a year ago. Jaden Shute will wear number 14 for the Duke Blue Devils team. We'll see Ryan Young wear number 15. That jersey was worn by Mark Williams last season. Number 21 will be Christian Reeves. That was worn by A.J. Griffin last year. Mark Mitchell will wear number 25 for the Duke Blue Devils. Pretty significant. That number's up in the rafters right now, but it's going to come down, and Mark Mitchell will get the opportunity to wear number 25 for Duke Men's Hoops. Kyle Filipowski will wear number 30. Max Johns will wear number 41. And Stanley Borden will wear number 52. Spencer Hubbard will wear number 55. You talk about jersey numbers. Obviously, those last two names we threw out there, last three, really, Max Johns, Stanley Board, and Spencer Hubbard, those guys are walk-ons. Max Johns is coming over from Princeton, and he will join the team. Uh, and then last year, Duke had a couple of walk-ons in Michael Savarino, Coach K's grandson, and Keening Worthington. Both of those guys will not be back for Duke men's basketball this season. So we'll see a couple of new guys out there wearing these jerseys. Uh, you go on back and, and Derek Whitehead wearing number zero. You could go back to Austin Rivers' days playing for the Duke Blue Devils, him rocking that number zero jersey. Sub-Zero was kind of the nickname that we had out there for Austin Rivers. Uh, it's just a whole lot of fun to see what these guys do when they wear uh, the, these jerseys. I mentioned Mark Mitchell getting to wear number 25. Art Heyman is the player that has that jersey number retired. We saw this a few seasons ago. For Duke with Marvin Bagley III, he wore number 35 for Duke, although that number was retired by Danny Ferry. Uh, Duke allows if the player that the jersey was retired for will allow a freshman to wear that number, they can make it happen. So it's pretty cool that Art Heyman has his number 25 jersey in the rafters, and uh, we'll see Mark Mitchell wear number 25 this upcoming season for the Duke men's basketball team. Next question comes in from Gavin. What are the most significant games on the Duke men's basketball schedule so far? And we are going to answer that question here in just a moment. There's a little tease for you. What are the most significant games on the Duke men's basketball schedule so far? We'll talk about that in just a moment. The first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders the Odyssey sports experts, the draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. As we dive back into today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils, my name is JJ Jackson, answering a question here from Gavin. What are the most significant games on the Duke men's basketball schedule so far? We'll start with the Champions Classic. That's where we always go. Duke started off in the Champions Classic last year against Kentucky. Very first game of the season, Duke was able to walk away with the win in that one. The Champions Classic every single year made up of Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, and Michigan State. The four teams never change. It just rotates who you play year after year. It's been going on for nearly a decade now at this point. Duke is taking on Kansas, the reigning national champions. Those Jayhawks defeated North Carolina in the championship game. And in the Champions Classic, Duke is 1-2 and all-time against the Jayhawks. They will play this game in Indianapolis at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. We know the first game of the season for Duke men's basketball for John Shire will be on November 7th against Jacksonville. November 7th is my birthday. That'll be a fun day. My birthday celebrating the start of John Shire's era as head coach. It's going to be a home game against Jacksonville, uh, who competes in the Atlantic Sun. Duke also knows they'll play another A-Sun team in Bellarmine. Bellarmine located in Louisville, Kentucky. They will play one another on November 21st. We know that Duke is going to be playing in the Jimmy V Classic on December 6th of 2022 in the Madison Square Garden. They will play Iowa. Iowa, the Hawkeyes, and Duke will play one another on December 6th. Thanksgiving week, 
Duke is going to be playing in the Phil Knight Legacy Tourney. They've played in these events before. There's the Phil Knight Invite and then the Phil Knight Legacy Tourney, those Nike-sponsored events. And Duke will be playing there with Florida, Oregon State, Purdue, Gonzaga, Portland State, West Virginia, and Xavier. Obviously, you will not play every team in that field, and we don't know the bracket matchups just yet, but a really loaded field. Uh, those are some of the highlights from Duke's men's basketball schedule so far, and uh, it's going to be a really tough non-conference slate. They'll also play in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Those matchups have not been announced just yet, so we've got some fun things coming for the Duke men's basketball schedule. Nick sent us a question on Twitter. Nick's question was, can you go over the Phil Steele All-ACC teams that feature Duke Blue Devils? Of course, Phil Steele has those college football preview magazines that so many people love, college football junkies. They know the season is right around the corner when those come out, and we are days, moments away from people being able to pick up their copy of the Phil Steele College Football Preview, and we'll have Phil on our podcast at some point in the coming weeks. We did it a season ago, and it was a lot of fun to talk about Duke football with him. Talking about Duke football this season, uh, they've got seven players that made all ACC preseason teams, according to Phil. Jalen Stinson, first-team kick return specialist. We know how good he is with the football in his hands on those kickoff and punt returns. And so first-team kickoff return specialist for Jalen Stinson. Shaka Hayward, second-team linebacker. Duke had three players on the third team, offensive lineman Graham Barton, Dwayne Carter from the defensive line, and punter Porter Wilson. Punters are people too. Shout out to our guy Porter Wilson. And then on the fourth team, Duke has offensive lineman Jacob Monk and long snapper Evan Deckers are on the team there. So those are the seven players that are on the Phil Steele All-ACC teams. And then finally, our last question of today's Mailbag Monday comes from Ryan. Ryan sent us a word. Who are the next names to be on the lookout for in the Duke men's basketball recruiting trail? That's something that we obviously care a whole lot about. In the class of 2023, the name to be on the lookout for is Xavier Booker from Indianapolis, Indiana, 6'10", 205. Duke had five commits in the class of 2023. That number dropped to four when Tyrese Proctor reclassified and decided to come to Durham a season earlier. So we've got room for more recruits to come in next season. Xavier Booker, 6'10", 205, the number four player in the entire country. He was a part of the Team USA mini camps, did not make the final roster for Team USA, but I had some time there with Jared McCain, who is a commit for Duke coming over from California. Talking about that Team USA, U18, Jared McCain, one of the 12 players that won gold medal. They played recently in the America's Championship in Tijuana, Mexico, and won gold. So congrats to uh, the Team USA and Jared McCain for what he did. In the class of 2024, We've seen three significant offers go out from John Shire. He's offered scholarships to three of uh, the top five players in the country. Number one, Nas Cunningham, a small forward from Gladstone, New Jersey. Number three, Trey Johnson, a shooting guard from Dallas, Texas. And then the fifth best player, Bryson Tucker, a small forward from Baltimore, Maryland. We'll see if those guys ultimately decide to come on visits and commit and join the Brotherhood to play Duke Ben's basketball. And the names in the class of 2025, that appear to have some interest from Duke. Again, there are timelines on how quickly these coaching staffs can reach out to them. Class of 2023, they will be seniors this upcoming year, 2024 being juniors. And so these guys are just going to be sophomores in high school in the class of 2025. But be on the lookout for Cooper Flagg, the six foot eight shooter. He's a bucket. I really hope that he comes and plays for Duke. And then the Boozer twins, Caden Boozer, 6'3, and Cameron Boozer, 6'9. Interesting to see Carlos Boozer's twins right there, 163 and 169. A little bit different playing positions for those two guys. But Caden and Cameron, you would like to think that Carlos Boozer, a star for the Duke Blue Devils, that his kids will one day ultimately play for the Duke University men's basketball team. Those are some of the names to be on the lookout for in the Duke men's basketball recruiting trail. And, and that does it. We've done another episode of Locked On Blue Devils, another edition of Mailback Monday here on the podcast. Let me know what you think. Comment below if you've got any thoughts or want to add to the answers there for some of the questions if you're watching us on YouTube. Again, 
You can connect with me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. And be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. And you'll get the latest episode of Locked On Blue Devils as soon as it's available each and every day. Go check out Locked On ACC with Candace Cooper. And that's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you soon. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.